Hallelujah. My Jesus, my Jesus, my Jesus. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for being so kind to me. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, that you're so gentle, so kind, so loving, so forgiving, so merciful, so gracious. Dear God, Dear God, He is so gracious, so merciful. He is so kind. Dear Lord, <laughs> dear God, you're so good. You're so good, Jesus. I, 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 I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Glory to God. <laughs> it's just, my gosh, Jesus. His heart is so tender, but yet he's so strong and so mighty. It's, but yet his heart is so tender. And when he comes and touches our heart, it breaks all the hardness. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to say something. I don't even know how I'm saying it at the moment, but. <laughs> it's there. I mean, I'm like, you know, I don't know. Maybe I don't need to go that way. Cause I, the point is, is I'm not trying to present myself as anything to you, the only thing I want to do is present Jesus and for us to see Jesus, for you to see Jesus. And not, not, I'm not talking about these eyes. I'm talking about the eyes of our heart through the word, through Holy Spirit touching our lives, empowering us. We walk with the Lord. Hallelujah. But I'm sitting here worshiping the Lord and the reality of his tenderness you know, I don't live ungodly or whatever. I don't live, you know, I mean, I'm not per perfect. and But I'm not like this big, hum I mean, holy, you know, I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm rough around the collar. <laughs> I mean, oh, my God. But, you know, thank God. Look at a lot of Jesus' disciples. They were, they were way rougher around the collar than I was, uh, you know, we are. So, you know, I mean, a lot of the people that God picks to, <laughs> To work through it at times or, you know, I mean, it, of course we grow and the Lord, you know, we mature in the things of God. I'm not trying to, I really want to make a point is that God, to me, this is what God's doing in me. He's taking me out of the whole religious aspect of it where it's love. It's where he's my father. I'm his son. We're in covenant because of Jesus is the centerpiece of that and that my does he's changing my desires to where i want to glorify the lord without you know be what i mean looking like this just like this i mean i don't have to you know i don't have to look fancy or nothing i mean if i do like dressing up at times but i mean it's not about that it's not about anything except our father and our lord jesus christ who who connects us with our father and our Father wants to love us. Hallelujah. Yeah. I imagine that. I mean, <laughs> just think, oh my God. I wouldn't plan on going in. I opened my eyes and I saw me. <laughs> I'm trying to be serious. I'm like, Lord, I'm trying to be serious here, but give me a moment. <laughs> but I, I am, oh man, I wish I knew how to express what I'm feeling, you know, what's in my heart. Because it's, it's, it's not, it's not about, you know, God standing there, oh, you know, or you better do this and you better not do It's not about that. 
You know, I mean, yes, the, the whole thing, life is serious, but it's just God is Father. He is Daddy. And, you know, and everybody's saying, well, this is, you know, end times or whatever, or whatever. I don't know. Eschatology, whatever. But I do know one thing. After doing this for 30 years, a few years ago, it became so real in my heart that God is desiring for us, so to speak, to slow down and allow him to be father. Well, well, that's who he is. He's daddy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, if God wants to be daddy, then, um, okay, Lord, okay, Father, be daddy. I'll, I mean, you know, it's, there's prophetic seasons, which means the, it means God brings an aspect of who he is and what he's done in redemption in our lives because there's a certain element that we've lost contact with. And there's so much of God. I mean, how can you not? You know, it's something. I mean, I, I'll be honest. It, you know, I mean, not that God's fat or big, but I mean, the heavens can't hold him. You know, so my point is, is that there's so much about God that at some point you're probably going to lose sight of something about his person. And if God wants to be daddy, then he let him be daddy. Well, okay, be daddy. Hallelujah. Well, you, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, that the whole earth and heaven it derives that uh, his fatherhood, God's fatherhood, all other types of father love that kind of nurture on you know like the father's nurturing them, the mother nurtures, but you know with the way the it, he wants to bring his strength where confidence begins to grow in us, and we become stronger and we bec we know we know our daddy we know god we know he's our father i mean in like john chapter 14 15 and 16 jesus right before he goes to the cross is talking about the holy spirit he said jesus said this it's to your advantage that i go away talking about he was not talking about redemption he was talking about after he died and was resurrected he says, it's to your advantage, after I settle redemption, that I go away and the Holy Ghost comes. It's to your advantage. That's what he was telling his disciples, what he's telling us. And you think about that. Well, how in the world is that going to, is better? But Jesus says it's better for, we're living in a time where it's better that the Holy Spirit is here in Jesus' stead and that Jesus is in heaven representing us because it, God wants to release his fatherhood, his love, where we become confident in God. Well, we're, I'm glory be to God forevermore. Woo, no, hallelujah. I mean, I'm tanked up again. It's a little bit different, but it's just, you know, I mean... Oh, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, glory, 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 glory. You know, I just, I'm not, gosh, I wish I knew how to say something because it's, I'm not against church. I'm not against, you know, your denomination. I'm not again, really against any, I mean, I'm not against these people, those, I'm not against nobody, really. I, it's who I'm for. I am for the Lord Jesus Christ. And anybody, as we get grow and as we, in a sense, become closer, well, you're going to find that there are falsities in our uh, character that God wants to work out. And, you know, that might sound like, well, I don't know if I want that. Well, I guarantee you, if you ever allow him to do that, you're going to think, dear God, do something else like that. Why? Because you're going to find greater peace and greater rest and greater stability in your being. Hallelujah. I mean, it's just all, really, when it all boils down to it, the benefit benefit is all ours. Well, how can it not be? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he's God and he's perfect. So, uh, what, you know, it's like anything. I mean, you know, you want the best for your children. You know, you want to, uh, you know, comfort them and you want to be able to instill into them so that they become confident and they become productive in life. Well, do well, you think God's any different? That's where we get it from. But it's so much better because it's coming out of his perfection. 
No, that doesn't make us perfect, but it's coming from the one who is perfect. Hallelujah. And that he's not, you know, beating you over the head trying to, you better be perfect. Well, I mean, that, I, just to be honest with you, there ain't nobody perfect. You know, I mean, Jesus, but you know, I mean, there ain't, uh, you, that perfection, even God's not even into the perfection thing while we're here on earth. And what he's into is allow us, uh, we allowing him to be daddy. But it's to our benefit. It's to our advantage. Well, I'm telling you, you're going to become stronger as a person. You're going to have confidence. You're going to be able to pray. So, you know, God, I know you hear me, and I know I have my petition because we learn, we're learning the Word of God, which is the will of God, and we walk in that, and we start to become strong and anointed in the Holy Ghost with fire. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. To Jesus be all the praise. I guess I could ramble on and on. But I just, it's, man, it's, it, free yourself from, f f free, you know, it's, sometimes we come to God with certain mindsets. And I've, I mean, God, the Lord has had to, I mean, it just, I, you know, I mean, and it's not necessarily wrong, but it's just, we don't realize how much God loves us, loves you. And just to stop and allow him to minister his love to your heart. I mean, it's just, it's it's a win-win situation. I mean, it is. It's like, you know, you somebody's talking, and it's the truth. Their voice goes, I don't, I've been thinking about the last two days, you know, you hear somebody talk and they're trying to be <laughs> very uh, emphatic or whatever. And then they say something, it's the truth. Their voice goes, anyways, hallelujah, glory to God. <laughs> oh, Jesus, hallelujah. It's just that uh, you kind of get caught up with the Lord and you just kind of forget time. Oh, it's 10 o'clock, 12. Oh, it's in the morning. Hey, we're still going at it. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> what y'all doing over there? Oh, talking about Jesus. Y'all been going out all night. Well, yeah, it's just getting better and better. It's getting better. I mean, it really, it, Jesus. And I don't. I'm not trying to sound surfacey. I'm not even trying to sound. You know, I'm not trying to. Uh, because it's God is serious, but you know. But I mean, sometimes some people get too serious. Where they just, you know, God may want to laugh. If he want, God, it's the Bible says God laughs in the heaven. So get over it. You know, I mean, if that trips you out, then you got, you think God is some old fogey stogey. He's not. He's not up there. You know, God is life. Jesus is the creator. He is life itself. So obviously he knows something about life that maybe I don't. I'll use me as an example instead of saying you. But you know, I mean, obviously there's things that he knows and it doesn't have to be something new. It definitely comes from his word. But yeah, I, obviously if you go to a electrician and they don't know anything about plumbing and you ask them about plumbing and they, well, you know, we may do that, you know, and you may go back home and do that. And then you got water coming out of every hole and every pipe. But the, Jesus in those things about life, uh, natural life, spiritual life, all kind, the whole kit and caboodle. Glory to God. So obviously, if we listen, our lives will benefit and it will bring him glory. And you know what? It's, it's, you'll find that you, uh, and this is, I, I still do this after 30 years. I'm like, I just stop with my mouth open and I'm like, my gosh. I'm like, Lord, this is just so freaking cool. I mean, because why? Because he's given me, he's tenderizing my heart. I mean, my heart gets hard real quick sometimes. I mean, you know, sometimes it'll take 30 seconds and man, I'm right and all that. You know, but I mean, and even when I'm in a having an attitude, I call on his name. He rises up, he comes, so to speak, and he touches my life. Well, that's what, that's what salvation, Jesus never tires being our savior. You know, I, you, it, it's not about me trying to be more perfect. It's about me allowing him to work in my life. 
It's not about me trying to do a whole bunch of stuff, but it's as I give myself to him in covenant, as Jesus and the Father are in covenant, I join that and I become empowered through that with their power and then his grace. And when, you know, grace gets inside of you, you just want to, you want to do something good for somebody somehow. We don't have to be something big. You don't have to be something flashy. It's just your, you, your desires begin to change and your motives begin to change and it becomes, it becomes a delight to obey God. I, I mean, if you told me that when I was 16 years old or 15, back in the eighties, I looked at you like, what are you talking about? Cause I just, that concept of thinking, obeying God, excuse me, I'm laughing. <laughs> I mean, it's still, I mean, it's just in my mind, it's like, I could never imagine thinking how to one day say, obeying God is a delight. I'm thinking, what planet are you from? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! It's there's just I mean because that took a long time to get through my head that like that it could be an actual reality that me obeying God is a delight. I mean how I thought, dear God, it's gonna I'm gonna it's just like obeying God. It's just gonna be one big mess, and I'll be whoa. And it ain't it, nothing like that if you understand what all that meant. <laughs> I mean, it just, I, I, I still, I, I'm still freaked out about it. And I use that freaked out really holy, really sacred because I'm in shock. I, when you think about if you were 10 or 12, 13 years old, or, you know, uh, that's been a long time ago. But anyway, I mean, you ever, did you ever think? At 14, you'd ever hear somebody ever say, obeying God is a delight. <laughs> but it is. There, there, see, my voice went high. See? <laughs> I, but I can't stop about Jesus because he's so wonderful. I mean, my God, he, for, he willingly forgives me. And even when I lose it, I mean, it, God, I mean... It's a win-win situation. I mean, why wouldn't I want to live for God? Why wouldn't I want to yield my heart? And God's not at really asking a lot. He's asking, allow me to work in your heart. And what happens, he's going to empower you. And his strength is going to come and the desire to obey. And you, it's a delight. My God, it's a delight to obey God. I, that is, the, to me, that is a miracle. Because I, I, in my mind, I'm still trying to work through maybe some of it. Because it's just like, could you ever imagine someone not? Somebody would say that. If somebody, like again, if somebody said that back then, I don't, you know, I mean, just a weird face. I mean, look, because you're like, that, that, I mean, it's just hard to compute because you, ne you never, I, mean, I never conceived ever thinking that, man, obeying God would be fun. It would be a joy. It'd be a delight. It's an adventure. Why? Because I'm walking with God Almighty. I mean, the big guy upstairs, and some, you know, I remember some people used to say, the old, the old, or the man upstairs, and then some people get offended. But the, really, if you think about it, Jesus became a man, and he went back to heaven as the God man, and now his body's glorified. So, in a sense, God, there's a, the glorified man upstairs, you know? I mean, anyways. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hope you got something out of that. <laughs> It's just Jesus is so wonderful. I mean, just I am I'm not trying, I don't, I'm not even, I'm not preaching church. I'm not preaching join this group. I'm just, I am presenting Jesus, God Almighty, God the Word. And he is wonderful beyond all imagination. I just, I'm even thinking about it while I'm talking to you. I'm just like. I could have never, ever imagined that it could be anything close to this, but it's yet, it just blows the whole thing out of the water because that's how Jesus is. That's who he is. Love you. See you next time on the Holy Ghost channel. I think I just ran over something. <laughs> A <little> stick. <laughs> oh, dear God. I need help, I think. <laughs> 
Have a blessed night. Love you. Bye-bye.